Ever wondered how the internet works? Today we delve into the very heart of the web, HTTP and HTTPS. These two acronyms are the backbone of how we navigate and interact with the internet. HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, is a protocol used for transmitting hypertext requests and information between servers and browsers. It's like a language that servers and browsers use to understand each other. HTTPS, on the other hand, is essentially HTTP but with an added layer of security. The S at the end stands for secure. It encrypts the data being sent and received, which keeps the information safe from prying eyes. This is especially important when you're entering sensitive information like credit card details or passwords. So when you're browsing the internet, HTTP and HTTPS are working behind the scenes, making sure you can access the information you need. So HTTP is the foundation of data communication on the World Wide Web and HTTPS adds a layer of encryption for security. Now that we understand HTTP and HTTPS, it's time to meet the two main players of the World Wide Web, the web servers and the web clients. Let's start with web servers. In the simplest terms, these are the digital warehouses of the Internet, storing all the information that makes up the web pages we interact with. When you type a URL into your browser, you're asking a web server to deliver the web page associated with that address. Now let's talk about web clients. These are generally the web browsers we use every day like Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. A web client's job is to request the information you want from the web server and then display it for you in a readable format. So, with every click, every search, and every URL you type in, you're seeing the dynamic dance between web servers and clients in action. It's quite a spectacle, isn't it? In essence, web servers and clients are the backbone of the Internet, constantly communicating through HTTP and HTTPS. We've talked about web servers and web clients, but how do they communicate? This is where the request and response structure comes into play. Imagine you're in a restaurant. You, the customer, are like the web client, and the restaurant is the web server. When you're ready to order, you tell the waiter what you want. This is the request. The waiter then goes to the kitchen, gets your food, and brings it back to you. This is the response. In the world of the web, it works much the same way. When you type a URL into your browser, that's like placing your order. The browser sends a request to the server asking for the web page associated with that URL. The server then processes this request, like the kitchen cooking up your order, and sends back the desired web page, akin to the waiter bringing your food. But what's in these requests and responses? Well, each request includes details like the URL you want to access, the method of the request, and additional data if needed. The response, on the other hand, includes the status of the request, the content of the web page, and any additional information. In short, the request and response structure is the fundamental communication protocol of the web. It's how your browser talks to servers and how you get to see your favorite web pages. It's like asking for a book in a library. You request the book, and the librarian brings it to you. To round out our understanding of the web, let's talk about cookies, sessions, and headers. These three elements are key players in making your web experience smooth and personalized. First off, cookies. Imagine entering a website and having to input your preferences every single time. Sounds tedious, right? Well, that's where cookies come in. They store data, such as your login information or site preferences, on your browser. This means that the next time you visit, the site remembers you and your preferences, saving you time and effort. Now, let's move on to sessions. If cookies are the personal assistants remembering your preferences, Sessions are the security guards tracking your activities. They keep track of your actions during a single visit to a website. For example, if you're shopping online, it's the session that keeps your shopping cart intact as you browse different pages. Finally, we have headers. These are like the envelopes carrying messages between the client and the server. They contain crucial information like the type of browser you're using, the size of the request, the type of response expected, and so on. This information helps the server to tailor the response to suit your specific browser and settings. Cookies, sessions, and headers may seem like small details, but they play a crucial role in making the web as functional and user-friendly as it is today. So now you know the basic building blocks of the web. We've journeyed through the fundamental differences between HTTP and HTTPS, explored the roles of web servers and clients, 
and delved into the nitty-gritty of request and AMP response structures. We've also unveiled the mystery behind cookies, sessions, and headers. This knowledge equips you with a deeper understanding of how the Internet operates beneath its surface. Remember, every time you browse the web, these are the gears working behind the scenes to deliver the information you need.